Hi Biology One, here with a quick recap for your second section of chapter one. Um, so this second section, this focuses a lot on just kind of what is science? What is the scientific method? Um, so let's see here, science is basically an approach for understanding the world around us. It's an approach for understanding the natural world. And it is based on inquiry. It's based on curiosity and asking questions and figuring out the answers to those questions. There are sort of two different styles of doing science. There's something called discovery science. Um, a good example of this is Jane Goodall with, uh, with chimpanzees and, and going out in nature and just kind of observing things. She was discovering things about, uh, about the world around her. So discovery science, it's all about describing nature. Um, that involves keeping a notebook, taking observations. Um, so that's kind of one style. The other style is what we would call hypothesis-driven science. And this is the one that we're going to be focused in on a little bit more heavily. Like, what is a hypothesis? So hypothesis-driven science, this is what allows us to explain things. This is all about explaining nature. Um, either approach, whether we're doing discovery science or hypothesis-driven science, either approach depends on recorded observations. And another name for that is just data. Okay, so data, this is what distinguishes science from other sorts of beliefs. It's this dependence on data. So definitely one of your big takeaways from this chapter is what is the scientific method? You should know the steps of the scientific method and how they can be applied to figure out answers to questions. Um, the scientific method, this provides us with some guidelines for doing scientific investigations. And the steps in order um, are as follows. So first there would be some sort of an observation that would lead to some type of a question. From there, we would come up with some type of a hypothesis, and after that, we'd make a prediction. Following our prediction, we'd, uh, we would run an experiment, and based on that, we would be able to draw some type of conclusion. So five major steps, observation, question, hypothesis, prediction, and experiment. Let's just go through these with, with an example, kind of like a real life example. So the interesting thing is the scientific method is probably something you've been doing all throughout your life and you maybe you just didn't even realize it. Um, this is really just sort of a, a formal way of saying, let's do things in a logical series so that we can figure out um, something about the world around us. Okay, so example I'm gonna go with is something super familiar. Let's say it's the end of the day, you're sitting down to relax and maybe you want to turn on the TV and watch a show. Okay, so what would you do? You'd probably need to pick up the remote and turn on the TV. That would be your first step. All right, so let's say you try to do that and it doesn't work. The TV doesn't come on. Okay, so our initial observation here would be uh, the remote doesn't work. Okay, we're obs we observe that first off. Next, we would ask a question. Why doesn't the remote work, right? You, you probably don't say this out loud, but you wonder it in your head. Why doesn't the remote work? That would lead you to formulate a hypothesis, come up with a, a possible explanation. We don't know yet if the explanation is correct, um, but it's one possible explanation. So our hypothesis might be the batteries are dead. All right, once we have that hypothesis, we can make a prediction, right? We can predict if I change the batteries in the remote, then the TV will turn on when I use the remote. Okay, so that's our prediction. If we change the batteries, the remote will work. Next, we would run the experiment. Okay, so actually do it. Actually change the batteries and try out the remote. See if it works then. At this point, um, hopefully the remote would work, which would demonstrate our hypothesis was correct. But if the remote doesn't work, here's the important thing. Um, this would lead us to a kind of a revise and repeat cycle here. We would revise our hypothesis. Uh, maybe it's not the batteries, maybe it's something else. Maybe, maybe the TV is unplugged. Okay, that could be our new hypothesis. Um, and then we would continue back through the scientific method. After, after we revise our hypothesis, then we would go on, make a new prediction, and run a new experiment. So that's the scientific method. Uh, we use it in, in science all the time, obviously, but you also use it in your day-to-day -day lives, and I just wanted to point that out. Okay, last thing here is just what's the difference between a theory and a hypothesis? So a hypothesis is something that 
it's a possible explanation to some question. Um, a hypothesis is something that hasn't necessarily been tested yet. It could just be literally an idea that you've had for a possible explanation. A theory, on the other hand, is something that is well supported with data. So it could be a hypothesis that's been tested many different times and it's been, um, it's, it's held true in all of those different tests. So in the English language, I think we tend to use those words interchangeably. I have a hypothesis or I have a theory. That kind of means the same thing in normal English language day to day. But if we're in a science discipline like biology, um, it's important to note there is a difference between those two words. A theory is uh, something that has been well tested. A hypothesis is something that it's kind of under investigation. Okay? We haven't necessarily finished testing it yet. All right, that's it for now.